Okay, so we've been building up some of the layers and um, you should have a list of all the different pencils that I've used. Um, we're sort of, everything's a bit one tone at the moment, so we need to get some detail in. So we need to start, I'm using the um, dark indigo to start getting some of the darker areas in. I don't want to go in with black because black is the darkest colour and it's it's very difficult to undo it when you've done black. So we're looking at sort of adding some darker tones using the dark indigo. So we've got a bit just below the ear here. And a bit around the back here. I mean, actually, the dark comes down the top of the ear. We can always add in black later, but it's best to start with the dark indigo and then you can darken it up if you want to. Otherwise, it can become a bit mucky looking. We're just putting these tonal areas in trying to make it a bit more 3D and this area here where the mane comes through is very dark um, we've got quite a lot of colour down there so we're just going to I'm putting a bit more pressure on now, but it's still coming out quite bluey looking, so we're going to need to go in with again with the brown after that over the top, I think. We're trying to make it look as if this hair here is frizzy, because that's what the mane is like. So I'm going to try adding a bit of burnt sienna over the top of that. So I want it to stay brown looking. Still not pressing very hard. What I'm going to add in is a bit of Caput Mortem Violet, which is a good a good colour for these sort of darker brown areas. pressure and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully build up enough colour so that if we go in with the slice tool we can remove some of that and make it look a bit more frizzy like hair. So it's going a bit ready now. We need a little bit more on that ear, I think, because that's quite dark. So anywhere that you feel is needing to darken off a little bit, I mean, this round here is this is a good colour because it's sort of brown but ready brown. Okay, we need to build up a lot more across here. 
this paper's not particularly good actually because it's got a bit of a grain in it here that you can see so it's just a matter of building up the colour it's I can't really show you exactly where to do it I just am following the tonal areas on the horse itself okay right I'm just going to use this which is a slice tool I don't think I've got enough color on there at the moment to actually see it to get it to work but I'm just gonna try it out so I use it upside down because I find it's the easiest it's weighted and it, it tends to spin around otherwise um, and if you watch you can just add in that you've got to remember that we've got paper underneath here so what we're trying to scratch off is the pigment and not the paper so really I need a bit more colour on here but it doesn't hurt to add a little bit in and then you can go over the top of it and it gives you that sort of texture of the the hair then if you use a dark color over the top so it's really just about so this is a dark sepia it's about building up those layers so I'm now going over all the bit that I've actually scratched away but I can scratch it away again afterwards I'm pressing a bit harder now because we need it quite dark around the back of that ear and into these bits here. So you can see as you build up the colour, layer upon layer, it gets more, it gets smoother and you can start to sort of so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of black in here just to show that contrast a bit more so I'll carry on working on this okay so a bit I've put a bit more dark underneath here and I've scratched it a little bit more with the slice tool you can use a normal knife for it um, I'm now putting in darker areas where you can see them using the burnt sienna so using burnt sienna because it's more the sort of chestnutty colour. Otherwise it can get a bit dull. You don't want it to be too dull. The yellow ochre, which I've used here, is a good base colour because it doesn't get it, it makes the overall image sort of more yellowy because otherwise it can get a bit as I say dull so burnt sienna is a good colour to use here now I normally <coughs> slightly rub off the um, the sort of I don't know if you can see this the graphite underneath but you don't want that there because sometimes it will show through so I try and make it sort of quite 
light so that I can see where the line is still, but I don't actually draw over the top of it. Because otherwise what happens is it smudges in with the rest of the colours and if you've got a lighter colour like white it will show. I'm not I'm gonna do that bit later. So at the moment I'm just building up these colours again, the browns for the background and you're wanting to look at all these that's not in focus hold on sorry about the wobble so you're trying to get all these sort of tonal areas like this in with the darker color but you need the base colors underneath to begin with okay so these are veins underneath the horse's skin and you want to put all of those in so that so you need a lighter color here so you want the sheen and you need the darker tones over here so that it makes the the horse seem shiny right i'll have to refocus that that's better okay so i've got a lot of work to do so i'm going to carry on doing that working my way down the horse's nose um, hopefully it's clear enough for you to understand what I'm doing. In order to burnish certain areas, so smooth them out, you can use the light flesh colour, which I'm going to use just to, you can't really see what it does, it just sort of smooths out the creases a bit makes it look a bit smoother and nicer when I say smooths out the creases it sort of blends the colors in it's not putting a lot of pigment on itself but it does help Smooth it all down. Even these areas that I've just taken the colour out of. You can add the colour back in. So I'm going back in now with the Van Dyke Brown, add a bit more to the darker tones. Once you've used the light flesh, it helps blend it over the, you can blend it over the top of it as well. So we've got a bit more darker colour at the top here. Well, that's not very in focus, is it? Sorry. So this area here is a bit too dark for me. So I'm going to use the kneadable eraser or rubber, whatever you like to say, 
um, to take some of that out. So you can do this, build up the colours, you, you put it in and then you take it out again. You can see the colour that's come off on the end, of, oh you could if it was in focus, sorry, on the end of the rubber. And then I'll put in a bit more colour to build it up again and just remove it in places. Okay, so um, we've added a lot of tones to the face. Um, what we're trying to get the um, effect of is a sheen on the fur or hair of the horse. Now, so the best way to do that is you've got to follow the direction that the hair actually goes in. So I've built these layers up using... Um, well, this is um, Burnt Sienna. I started off with the uh, yellow ochre, wherever that's gone. So light yellow ochre. Then we had a layer of terracotta. Then we have been using um, the walnut brown and the burnt sienna again but um the van dyke brown i've used a bit of that as well they're all quite similar colors the burnt sienna is slightly i don't know if you can see that a bit more reddy yellowy color um and the walnut brown so you can see the three different colors obviously if you've got those colors you can use them so that's the burnt sienna, so it's a bit more reddy. That's the Van Dyke brown, so it's a sort of pale reddy brown. And the walnut brown is a bit darker. So we're working with those and the dark sepia. I'm using the dark sepia for the shadows, the darker areas. The walnut brown for sort of building up these sort of areas. The Van Dyke brown I've used as an overall sort of tone to keep the background the right sort of colours. And the burnt sienna I've used over the whole thing as well, including for these um darker areas okay so I'm going to carry on doing that obviously this area I'm having a bit of a tr struggle because the paper is very sort of textured you can might I don't know if you can see there's lines in it but um, I'm going to carry on building up those colors you've just got to look at your image and where to put more pigment and where not to um, when it comes to these veins, I'm just putting a bit of shadow in, but I will use the Tombow eraser to rub out some of these bits a bit later when I've got a bit more pigment on there. Okay. If you get a bit too much pigment in a certain area, you can use the kneadable eraser to remove some of it. You hardly have to press at all, it will just rub off if you just rub it over the top of it. If you press too hard, you'll lose too much of the pigment. So this area of the face is quite sort of... Oh, sorry, I'm trying not to let it pop. It's quite light. You can always add pigment back in. 
So don't be scared about taking too much off. This needs blending in a lot more down here. So. It's almost like painting with the rubber itself, to be honest. Okay, 